Can you explain about your project? Well, it allows the users to perform uh, basic CRUD operations. So what is the difference between JDBC versus Spring JDBC? Yeah. JDBC is an uh, technology. Hey, Pawan, uh, can you explain about yourself? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Jashwan Pawan. I am from Tanko, Andhra Pradesh. Recently, I completed my Bachelor of Technology in the year 2024 from Srivasu Engineering College. It's 72% along with my degree I also completed my Java full stack program. So as part of my Java full stack I worked as a internship uh, in the VVQ software solutions from six months. So as part of my internship uh, I worked on a project called uh, employee registration system. Okay. So th that is the brief introduction about it. Okay. Can you explain about your project? Yeah. The brief introduction about my project is it is an employee reg registration system. Well, it allows the users to perform uh, basic CRUD operations like uh, creating the employee, retrieving the employees, updating the employer, deleting the employee from the employee set of records. For this project, I used the technologies uh, Spring Web, uh, Spring JDBC and the database MySQL. And for the front-end uh, validations, I used JavaScript for client-side validations. Okay, what is the difference between JDBC versus Spring JDBC? Yeah. JDBC is a uh, technology to connect with the Java program with the database. Well, Spring JDBC is one of the module provided by the Spring framework. Okay, what is meant by framework? Framework means uh, we manually don't need to improve from the scratch. So someone implemented for us, uh, it contains predefined classes and interfaces. We just need to know how to use them and when to use them. Okay. So can you elaborate uh, in Spring JDBC how you configured? Yeah, in Spring JDBC, first uh, I created a Maven project, which is a automatic build tool for downloading the dependencies. And uh, when you create a Maven project, uh, there is a file called form.xml. This file is responsible for uh, managing the dependencies. So in the file, I added the dependencies which I needed. So like Spring Web module, Spring JDBC, MySQL jar file, servlet files. These are the required uh, dependencies I added. Okay. And then there is a concept called uh, dot xml file which is the deployment descriptor this uh, file is responsible for uh, configuration with the databases so well my project follows the spring mvc architecture well in the view layer client made a request it is forwarded to the dispatcher servlet and the dispatcher servlet is a front controller which is responsible for forwarding the request to the appropriate controller and from the appropriate controller the request is forwarded to the dio layer or service layer whatever it may be mm -hmm. Yeah, to configure the servlet, dispatcher servlet, uh, I used web.xml. In the web.xml, with the help of Beanstag uh, servlet mapping, uh, I used uh, application context is the, my servlet name and the URL pattern is forward slash. Is it web.xml or beans.xml? I mean, uh, is it a, which XML it is? Yeah, beans. In, the, in application context, you created inside the beans.xml? Yeah, beans.xml. Or it's a web.xml? Beans.xml. Beans.xml. Yeah, go on. And then uh, I cre and created a uh, which is a file called application content uh, context hyphen servlet is then my own XML file to configure the database settings. Okay. So this file is responsible for uh, what are the tags used in that file? Yeah, bean tag and the, to scan the base packages context path is the tag used mm -hmm. and uh, property name values is the tag I use it to configure with the database like uh, driver class name, URL, password, username. And uh, internal view resolver is the flexibility to work with the J JSP pages. Okay. So every time I don't need to provide the path of the file and the extension like JSP. So once I created in the this XML file, I can work with uh, just call the page name. It uh, forwarded to the page. Okay. Flexibility purpose. Okay. So after Spring JDBC, did you work with any uh, Spring Boot applications? Yeah, Spring Boot also. Yeah, can you explain about Spring Boot application and differences between Spring versus Spring Boot? Well, the main major difference is Spring contains lo lots of boilerplate code. Spring Boot removes that. So Spring Boot is not a different technology. It is an extension of the Spring. Okay. Spring needs a manual. We manually need to add the dependencies like from the Maven repository or what. But is Spring Boot provides the concept called starters. So predefined starters. What are the starters you used in your project? Yeah, Spring Web is the one of the starters. Spring Actuators and uh, Spring Data JPA to work with the uh, database JPI. Okay, use. what is Spring DevTools will do? Uh, it is not a starter, but uh, Spring DevTools uh, is used to live reload faster application reloads and it comes with the default embedded server Tomcat. Okay, what about Actuator then? Yeah, Actuator is a, it is also a predefined uh, dependency. It helps us to monitor the application status and the metrics used by the application. Okay. Well, metrics means uh, how much memory it is consuming, how much RAM it is consuming. So, purpose. what is the uh, uh, how you configured that in your application? Yeah, in Pound.xml, I added the dependency from the Spring Initializer, the mm -hmm. best way to create the Spring Boot project. Okay, in application that properties, what yeah. are the changes you did? The change is uh, there is a property called management.endpoint.web.exposure.include equal to shard. 
so okay. by default this is off so we we must need to expose the include okay. include okay after including this uh, start the project and go to the any browser and and uh, type the url slash health you, you will get the health of the application if it is running uh, good then you get uh, up if it contains any problem you, you will get down like okay what are the http status codes you are seeing in your application executed execution yeah some of the http codes are 200 okay 201 mm -hmm. created uh, 404 uh, page not found error and mm -hmm. uh, 405 method not allowed 500 internal server okay These. okay can you explain about application net properties what is the use of application net properties in your application yeah whenever you create a spring boot project it automatically creates a application net properties it helps the developer to configure the settings of the application mm. so developer don't need to manually change the code we need to change the properties in this file only so the as, properties used yes yeah database connections so when you are working with the database connections your application needs to know what database you are using driver name url username Can and you password explain the properties clearly yeah i'm coming to that uh, spring dot database dot spring dot spring dot data source dot uh, driver uh, class name. For so this driver property, class name is there any gap in between or it's a driver no, no, class name? Full one. Driver is the small d and class name is capital letters. Okay. Yeah, okay. But uh, do you need to use any hyphens in between? No sir. No. no. You can recheck. It must be hyphens. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. So then, and the driver which is used is com dot mysql dot uh, cj dot jdbc dot driver. Okay, and URL, the, I missed it. Can you again tell me that URL? Yeah, spring dot uh, data source dot URL. Mm. What is the value? JDBC colon MySQL colon double slash localhost colon port number uh, forward slash. Uh, so, what is the default port number you are taking for database? Yeah, double three zero six is the default port number. Okay. And then uh, database name. Okay. So, good. Uh, if you want to enable while creating an application itself. I want to create a table directly uh, instead of creating a table directly in my database. Then how you will create a database through your Spring Boot application? Yeah, there is a command called DDL auto update uh, spring dot jpi dot uh, hibernate dot DDL auto update is the configuration file you used in the application dot properties. So whenever you start the application, it checks for the name. If the table is not there in the database, it creates the table automatically. Okay, explain about JPI repository. JPI stands for Java Persistent API, as its name suggests, it is an API. So, JPI is like a specification, a set of rules. When you are working with the database, uh, I manually don't need to write SQL queries. JPI will provide the SQL queries. What are the well. methods uh, you work with in JPI? Yeah. To save an entity, save is a method. To get the details by specific ID, it means any primary key ID, find by ID. And uh, for deleting purpose, delete by ID and uh, find all is the method to retrieve all the data from okay the if i want to take any another column so how i can go and create a new method custom method i want to create yeah yeah when you're then, working with the jp repository you create one uh, your own interface right which extends the jp repository so in that uh, one uh, interface you create the method and pass this uh, column name but there is a rule that this column must contain in your entity class so then you mentioned totally uh, which is related to rest api i understood how you validated this REST API in your application? Validated, right? How you validated? Is it in a Chrome or is it in any tool used? Yeah, for uh, GET requests, uh, I used browser, uh, any browser. And for the POST request, I used Postman as well. Okay, what is Postman? Postman is uh, in application, you can create the POST requests to work with. Only for, POST requests? For your testing, you can work with any request. What are the requests used in the Postman? get mapping post mapping put mapping delete mapping and uh, explain about some of the annotations which is related to spring boot spring boot yeah. and there is spring boot uh, application is the main annotation this annotation represents that it is a spring boot project it is a combination of three annotations at the rate uh, spring boot configuration at the rate enable configuration at the rate component scan hmm. well, at the rate spring boot configuration marks this class as a source for spring bean definition so it is similar to application context in traditional spring mvc applications and at the rate enable uh, auto configuration configure configures the application automatically such as uh, handling the dispatcher servlet starting the embedded server it takes care of automatically everything by this annotation and at the rate component scan is responsible for scanning the base packages okay and uh, it's my web project right so the annotations for is uh, at the rate controller so at the rate controller is a stereotype annotation this annotation helps to for when you are 
whenever your client made a request you want to return the response as a page view page so uh, controller is used other than that there is another uh, annotation is rest controller which is combination of controller plus response body mm -hmm. instead of returning a view page uh, i just want to return uh, some string format like json so rest controller helps us mm -hmm. that's the difference and there are uh, specialized annotations of uh, request mapping like get mapping post mapping at the rate what is the difference between at the rate request mapping versus at the rate get mapping yeah at the rate request mapping you can use for the class and at the rate get mapping post mapping put mapping delete mapping you so can use for methods so can't i use at the rate request mapping for a method yes you can use hmm, then what is the difference between at the rate request yeah. mapping and it, at the rate get mapping it must be more uh, readable way get mapping in request uh, in request mapping it supports all the uh, Mm -hmm. all the mappings like get mapping put mapping delete mapping so what, what is, is this? The, what is the intention of giving at the rate request mapping for the classes generally in real, in real time it is used for the uh, class for the base url okay so right. instead of working with the different versions uh, request mapping is helps us to you just need to change the version it is used for the class great okay what is the difference between at the rate request param versus at the rate path variable Yeah, both annotations are used to get the data from the URL. Hmm. Well, request param, you you give the data in URL separated by and and uh, key value pairs like uh, ID equal to value, okay. place orders, okay, and uh, name equal to like that. In path variable, you give the values directly separated by forward slash. That's the difference. Okay, what is the difference between Hibernate versus GPA? Yeah, Hibernate is an open source framework which is an ORM. Hmm. ORM means object relational mapping okay it automatically maps the java objects into corresponding database tables okay jpa is a specification it contains set of rules so how to work with ORM hibernate is one of the implementation of jpa which is a default ORM so should i if you want to suggest anyone to develop an application which one you will suggest hibernate or uh, jpa yeah i would suggest jpa why because uh, not only hibernate there are many ORM tools in the market like eclipse link open link If you work with uh, Hibernate, you you only work with Hibernate. But if you work with JPA, you can switch to any ORM models. Have you completed any project in Hibernate as well? Yeah. Okay, then explain it. In Hibernate, um, it's normal like uh, create a Spring project from the initializer. But you, if you want to work with pure Hibernate project, uh, you cannot get the dependency from the Spring initializer. You manually need to from manually add to from external resources. Okay. So for this, I added as Hibernate Core is the dependency I, I added in my Palm dot XML. Okay. And to work with web uh, web project, each web module is added and uh, MySQL is used. So uh, drive, MySQL driver is used and Dev tools ob obviously. Okay. And then the main the major important thing is to work with uh, Hibernate. There is a file called Hibernate dot CFG dot XML. Hmm. This file is responsible for configuring the Hibernate settings. Okay. So what are the settings you added? Yeah, Hibernate, uh, as I mentioned, is a, it is an ORM. It hmm. can support various databases. Hmm. So it must need to know which database you, it is using. Which database you used? MySQL. Okay. So in Hibernate dot CFG dot XML, with the help of uh, tags, Hibernate configuration and uh, under session factory, with the help of property tags, I used uh, property name equal to for loading the driver class name. URL, username, password, and Hibernate properties such as uh, Hibernate also can create automatically tables with uh, no need to create from the SQL, okay. my SQL database. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the difference between MySQL versus Oracle? As my experience, I never worked with the Oracle. Okay. Only worked with my SQL. Okay. So good, good enough about frameworks. Yeah. So when it comes to Java, you mentioned proficient in Java eight features. Yeah. So can you explain about lambda expressions and stream api explain about lambda expressions yeah lambda expressions is the functional uh, expressions mm -hmm. which mainly use it for considering the code and to enable functional programming in the java okay well, the syntax follows parentheses followed by arrow token and okay. uh, block of statements and closed with in uh, for open brace and closed brace okay yeah to work with uh, lambda expressions you must need functional interface what is functional interface Functional interface means it is one of the interface which contains only single abstract method, but can contain any number of static and default methods. What is static? To give the if uh, for example, assume a scenario I have one interface, and the interface is implemented to ten classes. The ten classes uh, all have same behavior. So instead of writing the same method in ten classes, it uh, time consuming and more boilerplate code. So I use this uh, method in the interface static method. Obviously, static methods contains implementation in the interface, and uh, 
I place the uh, block of code in the interface itself. So I can call this uh, with the interface name and method name. Can I call by using object reference variable that method? No, you cannot create an interface object for the interface. No, yeah. I'm talking about my class implements an interface. Okay. So by using interface reference variable, I'm creating an object of my class. Yeah. Okay. Then that interface reference variable, can I call this static method? No. Interface A. No. Class B. Okay. Yeah. Answer is? No. No. Okay. So what about default methods then in the interface? Default methods are also one of the Java feature. The purpose of introduction is to achieve backward compatibility. What is meant by backward compatibility? Yeah, it is also yeah, some scenario based. Uh, for example, I have one interface which is implemented to assume like 50 classes or whatever it may be. And after that implementation, I have new requirement, new specification. So if I want to add this specification, I must need to, so by default, the uh, interface methods are public and abstract, right? So if I want to add new specification, I want to provide the implementation in all the classes, 50 classes. So instead of this, uh, there is a concept called default methods, which contains the implementation itself in the interface. I create the default method and place the block of code. Default methods are used uh, if the requirement is, uh, if the specification is not common for all classes, you can override. So flexibility, you can override your own implementation if you're not satisfied with the. Okay. So then explain about Stream API. Yes. Yeah. Stream API is also one of the Java 8 feature. It allows us to perform a set of operations on a stream of data. A stream of data means collection of data, but is different from the collections. Mostly stream data will come from collection or arrays. So stream is introduced in java.util.stream is the package where stream is the interface. While coming to the stream operations, category is into two types, terminal operations and intermediate operations. Intermediate okay. operations means uh, after performing a stream operations, again it returns a stream data. Terminal operations means uh, after performing operations, it does not return a string, it returns a single value. Example for the terminal operations are um, count for each, collect, these are methods and for intermediate operations, uh, filter, map. What filter is expecting? Filter is expecting predicate. What is, is predicate? Predefined functional interface. Okay, what map is expecting? Function, it is also predefined function. Okay, what are the methods you used in predicate and function? Predicate in uh, upset method from the predicate is test is the method, which is expecting one argument. To what is it returning? Boolean. Okay. Boolean value. What and about uh, map? Map uh, applies the upset method uh, and uh, it is expecting one parameter and retur returning the value. Okay. So tell me about supplier. Yeah, supplier means uh, it does not take any input but gives the output and the upset method is get is the method. Okay. So can you explain about the uh, DDL DML commands? Yeah, DDL commands are data definition language commands, create, alter, drop, truncate and DML are data manipulation language commands like insert, update, delete and other than this uh, DQL data query language which is a select and uh, data control language which is grant, revoke mm -hmm. and uh, there is called transaction commit, uh, rollback commit, save point. What is the difference between table and view? Table is a physical entity which contains the data, where view is an abstract entity. It contains the data information, but uh, it cannot be in physical form. So, mm -hmm. why, what is the purpose means, uh, generally to execute the SQL queries, it, it takes some time, right? So, every time when I, when my requirement is, uh, I need uh, multiple places, so it takes some time. So, instead of writing the queries, uh, all the times I can use the view. Okay, yes. okay, great. So, what about React? Do you know React? Yes. Okay, so what are the view pages you worked on then instead of React? What is the view pages you worked on? Yeah. Well, working with my Spring Boot project, I used Timeleaf as a templating. Explain about Timeleaf. Timeleaf is a templating engine to hmm. generate uh, dynamic content into the HTML pages. These are helpful. Hmm. Spring uh, automatically supports uh, Timeleaf. We need okay. to add the dependency called Timeleaf. Okay, in, in HTML pages, do I, need to any, do I need to add any tags? Yeah, in... I'm not sure about the tag, but you need to add the tag uh, at the start of the page, HTML page. What is that? I'm not able to recollect one, exactly. Okay. Well, good luck. All the best, uh, Paul. Yes. So, yes. Good luck. All the best.